Hey guys, chairman 37 x here, bringing you a video on the very recently released uh, Idol Game Maker, made by Ortel and Opti. Ortel, of course, is known most commonly for uh, Cookie Clicker, I'm sure, something that people on this channel know very well about. But, um, yeah, also this is their new website, recently, uh, I think it was revamped, actually, the same day that uh, Idol Game Maker went up. Looks pretty nice, there's some, of course, this we've pl spent plenty of time on. This, uh, I really want, I think I might do a video some videos on never ending legacy sometime this is a really fun little game that he has um some other neat things i'd like to show off sometime but right now we're focusing on of course the idle game maker uh so we go here uh you'll notice uh yeah basically idle game maker is a very very simple and very easy to understand uh engine that lets you make idle games uh, so we have an example that he made but first we're going to go ahead and check out and in the future he's going to be adding uh more sample games as he adds features because this is still very much so a work in progress but um, we're, I'm not going to spend too much time on this right now I want this video to be relatively quick um, and I'll talk about it a bit more at the end of the video what uh, I want from you guys to help give me input on what you guys might want to see on Idle Game Maker uh, on this channel in the future uh, first off something you might notice last updated 8.8 um, eight says you know like two and a half months ago uh, so this kind of shows this this has been in the works for quite a while just the this version of the handbook was up you know almost three months ago so uh yeah it's this has been in the works for a long time he's been i think he hinted he's been hitting at it on and off for a while on his tumblr and posts he's been making and stuff so it's very exciting this has finally been released um yeah it's a tool that lets you create idle games basically how this works is you just make a text file with um a certain certain formats and certain things and you uh here it says that the website converts it into a browser game um so you just like like here this here is an example i'll show that off in a minute uh you just put the text file on a uh hosting website pastebin it's the one he recommends but uh, there's plenty of other ones you could choose of course um this this is a very big handbook this does actually detail as you can see here it does detail like everything that this this uh engine is capable of I'll go ahead and switch over to the, this is the actual text file for the game that he made to show off the engine. It shows off just about everything. Uh, it shows off just how powerful it can be, and even, the, obviously, there's a lot of stuff even that you can do beyond what he did, but uh, I'm just going to kind of quickly go through. You can kind of get a feel for, if anyone, any of you guys are familiar at all with any sort of programming languages, you can kind of see how it works. It's similar to that. Uh, the, the interpreter, whatever, for this is pretty lenient, I've, uh, he said, so... You know, like, obviously, like, minor mistakes can still be a big problem, but the the interpreter, I think the engine, is very good at, at discerning what it is, and it'll help you out a lot. It's it's very, very forgiving from what I've seen. Um, the first square here, let's make a game. This is just where you put some of the basic info stuff, the name of the game, description, creation date, version, stuff like that. Settings, this is just kind of some uh, basic stuff here. You can go ahead and switch over to here. Uh, he has a, you know, a nice big section about everything, all the different functions you have, uh, all the different things that you can do with the engine to customize everything exactly how you like this CSS. If any of you guys are, uh, familiar with that, you can get some good usage out of that here for making stuff look really nice. Uh, let me just kind of look around here. You can see there's a lot, there's a lot to, to look at, but it's very easy to get into. Again, there's a lot that you can learn just by looking at this, uh, this example here. Uh, resources. This is, these are like the uh, the currencies that you have. You can have multiple currencies, which is cool. Uh, Shinies is like the golden cookie equivalent for any for anyone familiar with Cookie Clicker. Uh, you can basically. It seems like you can add multiple of these as well. Everything you can add multiple of, like uh, buttons here. This is the the like the main cookie and Cookie Clicker. That's the equivalent of that. It seems like you can even have multiple of those. Which there's there's just a lot you can do with this game. You can make some really interesting idle games. I think with this. And it's very simple but very powerful as far as I can tell um, you got buildings you can make uh, templates which is kind of cool it kind of um, streamlines the process of making stuff uh, you have the IDs here which is how you refer to it within the code uh, description icons which you can actually have uh, up here in uh, where is it settings sprite sheet you can uh, you can you can just as well have icons for everything as individual pictures but it's easier if you have a lot of things to just make a sprite sheet and it'll, it, you can just access things like it does here, 3 comma 0, this will be, 
uh, you know, it'll point to a specific square in the sprite sheet, and it'll take elements from take uh, the the icon that's there. You can do upgrades. The upgrades in this version, in this example game, are pretty interesting. I think building upgrades, uh, just a lot of really cool stuff. Some golden carrot upgrades, uh, achievements, of course. Yeah, there's a there's a lot of really cool things you can do with this. I'm very very interested in maybe experimenting with this program quite a bit in the future. See, so it's a lot of different effects. There's there's a lot of stuff you can do with this. It's it's very impressive, and you can definitely tell just how how much time has gone into this. But um, um yeah, so the, this the basically what the program does is it turns uh, these big old text files. Uh, it takes them and it turns them into a game. Wait, whoops, sorry. This is, uh, I forgot to wipe it before. I was doing a bit of experimenting before the uh, the video. But um, yeah, this is what that text file created. This is the <clears throat> the game that was generated from it. You know, it's very sleek design. Obviously, you know, games that you just kind of make are not gonna look you know nearly this nice, not not without a lot of time. He obviously spent a lot of time on this example as well because it all's, it's all very clean. Everything has like special sprite work and stuff. <clears throat> but you start out like you do in any any idle game. You start by you know clicking this thing here. It's uh, bunnies. You click on the bunnies and you get more bunnies. It's a very nice. It's a nice happy game. Uh, there's no twist. I mean, there's a twist. There's some twist, of course. It's Ortel. He's always gotta throw in some some interesting stuff with the later upgrades. But uh, it always stays a nice happy game. But um, before we get into that a bit, let's go. The settings page is very nice. Uh, you can pick how it displays the numbers, which of course doesn't make a difference right now. Particles. I just leave on auto CSS filters. You can turn on and off. This is the, you know, obviously you can see it makes just adds like sh uh, shading and shadows and stuff. Looks nice. Uh, you can do stuff with saves. Auto save you can turn off, which I think is interesting. And then here's the info where it tells you about the game, uh, description, name, and also this is where it stores your achievements. Again, this is not the only way to do. It. You can have this stuff laid out any way you want. Uh, hold on, let me get this. Uh, there we get our first golden carrot. That's the main way you get golden carrots in the uh, in the it's called bunny clicker that's the way main way you get them is from those lucky bunnies but um yeah you can have it's kind of you can you split it up based on these panels so like this is where i think the main button and like the resource amounts are and then this is buildings and then upgrades so like it's kind of modular so really you can have like instead of upgrades you can like put achievements here and you can have stuff down here and you could you could do a lot of stuff with this there's this uh this this example only shows off like a small portion of what you can do with the engine but uh, yeah, this is just how he has it. It's very clean how he has it laid out here. It's very nice. Uh, you know, it'd take a long time to get something that looks this nice, which I'm sure he spent a lot of time on it, like I said. But uh, yes, yeah, so you click this. Of course, you get uh, you got your building. So it's all pretty straightforward A lot uh, for most of it. He still throws in some interesting stuff. I just, you know, I have an auto clicker that clicks it. Yeah, this is a pretty reasonable rate to click. I just don't want to have you guys hear the mouse clicking over and over again. So, uh, I figured I'd do that as a little courtesy. Also, that golden carrot, uh, right now they are... Oh, uh, right now they are only used for a couple of upgrades, as you can see. This will get a 1% chance of getting a golden carrot per uh, bunny click. That's very important, because uh, that allows you to much more regularly generate golden carrots. Which is very important, as I'm sure you can imagine. Uh, there are the uses for golden carrots will only increase as the game goes on trust me You'll see I have a save of uh, very late in the game because I I've been playing it since uh, Since the since I found out that the engine in the game went up So I have a save that's just about like at the very end of the game and it's uh, Golden carrots actually are my main limiting factor at the moment not bunnies most of the time at least But um, yeah the upgrades here you see the upgrades right now actually there's no upgrades for specific buildings in this one uh, they just give extra bunnies per click, which is nice. So now I get three per click, uh, which is very good right now. So this will help us to kind of move it along here. You'll notice also a couple more upgrades appeared. Well, this one was already here. 30% chance for lucky bunnies, which is nice. This one's interesting. Independence Day. Uh, you can get, I think there's only three buildings you can get. In, uh, or maybe four that you can get before Independence Day. But uh, before, uh, sorry, to get the rest of those buildings, you have to get this upgrade, which is pretty cool, actually. Again, I think a lot of this stuff he kind of put in just to show a lot of what the what the engine's capable of. Like, that shows how you can lock buildings and, and other things. Lock anything, really, behind certain unlock requirements. So, potentially, you could also, I think, have it so that, like, certain buttons appear. Like, this bunny, you could have, like, another button appear once you hit a certain, um... 
a certain once you you know once you do something in particular oh, we're gonna go ahead and get that and let's go ahead and get a rabbit coop that's what five per second that's pretty good so um yeah it's just kind of showing off again what you can do with the engine of course multiple currencies you can have as far as i'm aware you can have as many resource amounts as you want in this game which is really cool uh there's there's just so much you can do with this um <clears throat> So we can go and get another one, another bunny per click. You see, after the, that one, the rest of the upgrades, uh, they multiply the bunnies you get per click. And also, they give you a percentage increase on how many bunnies you generate per second, which is cool. Uh, there's some upgrades that you only unlock after hitting certain thresholds. So I think once you hit, like, 20, either 20 rabbit cages, 20 hutches, or 20 rabbit coops, or something along those lines. It might not be those exact numbers, but uh, similar, similar to that. Uh, there are certain upgrades. Basically, the building upgrades in this game work uh, by... Oh, there we go. Actually, going. It's like 10 or 15. Uh, they upgrade in, in like, sets. So, this one upgrades the first three basic buildings. Uh, multiplies by two, I think. Yeah. And, um, you know, as time goes on, you'll you'll get more uh, more buildings. And they the rest of them, I think, from here on, upgrade in pairs, I think, typically. Uh... And yeah, there's eventually they start using golden carrots to be to upgrade as well as bunnies. So I think this kind of shows off, you know, the 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 main the main game here. You can go ahead and get that. That's gonna give us a nice boost. Of course, those three those three buildings are the only ones we have, so it's just, it just doubled our our BPS, I guess, bunnies per second. But um, I think we're gonna go ahead and switch over to my actual save, uh, which is right here. And uh, yeah, as you can see. I have quite a bit more. I'm gonna go ahead and zoom out a little bit here, so you guys can look at look at everything here. Uh, we'll go to like here. Uh, so you see, there's quite a few. There's yeah, there's ten of these upgrades that increase your clicking and like the percentages of your stuff. You can see I don't have quite everything yet, but I'm pretty close. There's three up. Basically, there's one upgrade for every building. It's just that they upgrade in sets. So you see this. There's three ones for these, but all of them upgrade all three of those buildings by two. Um, yeah, you get Independence Day, and then it unlocks all this. Other. I think, I think Rabbit, I think Rabbit Villages and onwards are the ones that are locked behind Independence Day. I believe. Um, I'm not sure why it's shaking. That's a little bit odd. Um, also, you can see there's this is pretty cool. Um, basically, this Moon Citadel this is a you know very late game building as you can see, but um, you can actually make it make them generate golden carrots. One for each Moon Citadel, you get one golden carrot every hundred seconds. So you see, I actually have. A uh, generating amount for golden cook for golden carrots, which is really cool, and basically the end game, which is interesting. There's actually an, a, like an end goal to this game is this freedom fortress, where basically you pay this amount and it increases this by a percentage and it increases the cost. As you can see there, the only thing that this does is is basically just like uh, just for people who want like a goal. Basically, this is your goal. Once you get this to 100%, you get the last achievement in the game, and then you're technically you're done with the game. So it's pretty cool. Uh, I think there's only one upgrade I'm missing. I think it's for having 50. Um, yeah, I can't get it quite yet. If I get 50 villages, I'll get another upgrade. The thing is, he has the text, so you can kind of see everything in the game, which is pretty cool. So you can you you know like uh, what stuff you still have left to do in the game. But um, yeah, this just kind of shows off what uh, what the engine's capable of. It's really exciting. It's I think it's. It's gonna make uh, making idle games very accessible. There's already a Reddit that you can go to to check out suggestions, and for for people, that's where people like put their games uh, that they want people to check out. Uh, I've looked at a few. Some of them, you know, it only just came out, so and people have to learn it. So a lot of the games are pretty basic right now. But uh, I, I think there's a lot of potential. I think if if people if some people are very serious about making these kinds of games, I think this is this is gonna go a really long way. <laughs> and that kind of leads me into the last thing I want to talk about in this video is that um, I'm wondering what I really want to cover more of this game on, on the channel very much so in fact <laughs> sorry about that um, but there's a lot of directions I could go and go in with that uh, <clears throat> the main two that I can think of one is I could start potentially working on a, I, I could do both but I'm just wondering what you guys are interested in watching I can start potentially working on an idle game. I have some ideas in my head, a lot of ideas, but um, I'm trying to figure out which one would be kind of the most 
reasonable to do and one that'll be the most interesting you know like a like a very unique thing that i could work on and how i can kind of take advantage of the cool things that the engine allows you to do and kind of show them off so there's that and also um the other main thing is checking out other games that people have made like you know looking through the reddit and trying to find games that um that people have worked on and kind of you know go through them review them sort of you know kind of show off see what's good what's bad also taking into account of course how long the engine was out at the time because obviously if i were to do that like today and judge the games it would be very different than if i did it you know like three months from now when people you know there's been a lot more time for people to learn how to use it and how to best utilize the uh what it's capable of but um yeah those are the main two things i can think of also obviously if he ever does um any more idle games that like any more sample games i'll definitely do videos on on those as well uh if you guys want to see more on this particular game i could also do that i'm not really sure what i'd do videos on because uh yeah, you can kind of see everything here. It's pretty simple. I, I went through pretty much the whole game over the course of a day, just, you know, checking back every once in a while. So it's very, you know, very simple. It's supposed to be pretty simple just to show off what, what the engine can do. But, uh, yeah, I'll still do videos on on any future games that he does uh, just because, you know, I love everything this guy does. So he uh, he makes really good stuff, and I'd be really interested to see what other, um, what other games he can come up with this engine, uh, especially once they start adding new features. Which is pretty exciting, because uh, one thing I have to assume is going to be coming sooner or later is a legacy or ascending function. <laughs> because currently there is actually no way to do that as far as I'm aware. I mean, I'm sure people can people can figure out a way to like uh, to manipulate it so that you can sort of do it that way, or you know, like to to achieve something similar to that at least. But I don't think there's like an officially officially supported way to do it at the moment. So I would assume that's definitely something we're going to see in the future. But um, I think that is going to just about do it for this video. So uh, thank you guys very much for watching. If you liked this video, please like, comment, subscribe, all that good stuff. Uh, check the description for a link to my Twitch.tv channel where I play a lot of uh, Binding of Isaac Afterbirth Plus. Uh, I do some streams with one of my friends. We play uh, Terraria. I think we're going to start doing like Borderlands and some fun stuff like that. And also, I plan on playing Cuphead sometime in the future. I haven't decided when yet, but uh, I'll have more information on that uh, in a later video. And, um, yeah, please leave in the comments what you guys would be most interested in in watching me do with uh, Idle Game Maker. Uh, very excited to do more of this, uh, more of this for you guys. And, um, yeah, and of course, also check, uh, check out my Cookie Clicker series if you haven't yet. The link will most likely be in the end slate. And, um, yeah, thank you guys for watching, and I will see you guys later.